Welcome to The Lost Signals Discusses Film and TV. Using the revolutionary Manzor Mosi Thurlow scale, or MONS, we scrupulously review these art forms with an emphasis on narrative structure. Join us for another entertaining episode. Hey, welcome back to The Lost Signals Reviews. And today, we're doing The Irishman. Hey. Hey. Uh, we sat through the Irishman and aged <laughs> 20 years. <laughs> they had to digitally de-age me after I was done watching the movie. <laughs> I'm Jonathan E. Manzer, here with my soon-to-be-dead friend, uh, Stephen Mosey. Oh, how's it going? Hey, hey Scott. Now, go. <laughs> and uh, Scott, yeah, I think you have a funny logline for us. Uh, yes, this is the story of that time uh, grandfather, grandpa killed Jimmy Hoffa. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and Stephen, would you like to talk about the plot of this movie? Yeah, I'm going to try and condense this quite a bit because it's three hours and 45 minutes long, <laughs> the movie. So um, hopefully my plot description won't be quite so lengthy. It starts off with old Frank Sheeran, played by Bobby De Niro, telling a story about when he was younger. And then he starts telling a story about when he was even younger than that. <laughs> and it goes back even further it's Inception to wow. the days where he, uh, you know, was kind of just uh, come back from the army, and then he becomes a mobster under the tutelage of uh, Joe Pesci, uh, Joe Pesci's character, Russ Buffalino, who he meets randomly through Joe Pesci's brother. Um, they become fast friends. Eventually, Joe Pesci decides to uh, push him up the chain. He becomes like a... House painter. Well, yeah, he, he becomes a house painter pretty quickly, but like at, shortly after that... He goes even further up the chain. And he kind of, then he decides to uh, Pesci decides to tell him to to basically watch Jimmy Baby Hoffa's back. Jimmy Hoffa. Yeah, uh, and and at the same time, yeah, like give Jimmy Hoffa whatever instructions that the mob wants him to have as as he uh, goes through life being the president of the union. So this happens for a while. Jimmy Hoffa uh, gets into a bunch of arguments with people. El Pacino actually really you know in a in a in a standard Pacino style, uh, yells loudly at some people and uh, over <laughs> overacts as Jimmy Hoffa was known to do sometimes, I guess. Um, and finally, gets well, he gets indicted at some point. Then he gets out of jail and he tries to get his old job as the president of the union back. Uh, gets into it, gets the kind of butts heads with the head of the you know with the heads Current. of the mob uh, back in New York and. Uh, they decide to kill him, so they send uh, Frank Sheeran, Bobby De Niro's character, to go uh, murder his ass. And uh, you finally see, like, in, a, in a, actually a fairly well uh, filmed scene, the uh, painting of the house, the, the painting of Jimmy Hoffa's house, I guess, yes. as he blows his brains all over the walls. And then the movie goes on for another forty-five minutes for some reason, and um, that's like the epilogue aftermath. Great, yeah, a very long epilogue. I mean, I I get it to an extent. It was it was like it was like he does in like kind of all his movies. Like, here's what happened afterwards. After it like all, ma- this. it made the Lord of the Rings seem restrained with their ending. But but it does go on for a very long time after like the real point of the movie is over. The main thrust of the half of uh, narrative. Yeah, and I get and it comes back to you know we we go all the way. Uh, we literally take the amount of time it took for Robert De Niro to go from being 30 years old <laughs> until he's 80 and about to die. And then by that point, we get back to him telling the story again. And uh, he's sad and alone because he was a fucking murderer his entire life. And his family doesn't want to hang out with him anymore. And that's the end of the story. And then credits for 10 minutes as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's pretty much like the story of Frank and his relationship to the mob and the whole Jimmy Hoffa debacle if you will thing so i mean you've mentioned it already this movie is long and feels long at least it did to all of us for mm-hmm. sure like we all watched it together and by, by the time it was over we were like christ thankfully it's over like so i'm not sure how to score it in a sense like i'm not going higher than a two i'll tell you that much i could even bump down to a one but i'm not i think that might be a little harsh so that's what i'm looking at yes 
before we go on, it told the story of what happened with Frank and Russ and Jimmy and, and all the other ancillary like mobsters and wise guys and stuff that surrounded it and all the other players. So there, it, what are, there are 400 characters in this yeah, movie or something four, like that? There's like 400 and change credits and if you look up the IMDb uh, credits. So I'm just saying, given that, it told its story and then some. And even within that, the way it told the story, to me, was a little like haphazard, a little wandering, meandering, I guess is the word I think I used while watching it. Mm. So that's how I'm coming down on the narrative. So what do you guys think? So there's a really good movie in this movie. The Jimmy Hoffa storyline was great. And that's really the, the heart of it. The heart of it and the emotional thrust of this. Yeah. The, uh, it, the rise and <clears throat> fall of Jimmy Hoffa. But it's book ended with very thick tomes <laughs> of Frank <laughs> Shireen's life. life. Mm. And here's where I have my issue. So one third of this movie is very, very good. Meaning that two thirds of this movie isn't very Mediocre good. Mediocre to eh, yeah. And one of my problems is, one, they have four flashback. They have a flashback. Of a flash. In a flashback. In a flashback. In a flashback. Yes. Which is just poor storytelling. <laughs> and it's not even particularly interesting what they're. It's not necessarily like. It's a flashback of uh, uh, Pesci and De Niro driving down. They see like a Texco station. And they're like, hey, remember this? Remember we <laughs> met then, you? Yeah. Um. It 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 felt like uh, Scorsese had no one telling him no in this, and it's too perhaps too faithful to history to the point where we're getting details I don't need for the story. Mm. Uh, secondly, and this is perhaps not going towards narrative, but I'm gonna bring this up. I'll save this for style. Okay, but I was my immersion in this was broken quite often. And I'll explain why when we get to style. Yeah, I get you. But yeah. narrative wise, all right. And here's another thing: we uh, Anna Pequin is her name uh, plays uh, Shireen's daughter. daughter yeah. And thank God they didn't try to de-age her to play the uh, eight-year-old girl, <laughs> because I wouldn't be shocked if they did. But uh, uh, the fact is, I didn't actually feel that there was. A very much any emotional connection between uh, him as uh, the parent to his daughter. Well, they want you to think that, but they didn't actually set it up, as I think is what you're saying. She's always been distant, and I, there was no emotional payoff at the end, to, at least to me, mm. between him losing his daughter, because he never had her to begin with. Mm. Um, and I don't know, just that the bookends of this movie were far, like, failed, to make me disinterested in ever watching this movie again, even though I think that there is a good somewhere within one all third that. of a sec- uh, movie in there, uh, a good hour and a half of uh, uh, of Hoffa. Yeah, <laughs> Hoffa hour is great. The rest of it sort of like eh. Oh, also one thing is that I and even Scorsese kind of lampshades this, but there's a lot of assumed knowledge on the part of the viewer, uh, and he is like. Millennials don't know who Jimmy Hoffa is anymore, <laughs> and that's fair. I know of Jimmy Hoffa only through the fact that when I was growing up, people made a lot of jokes about him, yeah, and the they disappeared. Sure. Yeah. But uh, like, they'll just have like mobsters on. Like this guy got shot in the head twice. I was going to mention that as well. In yeah, style. and it's like, like yeah, it's great. I don't understand how he fit. like. Perhaps if I knew who all these players were, it would have more of an impact on me. But perhaps this movie wasn't made for me. And on that fact, though, I was alienated throughout it. Uh, by the storytelling i was burdened by a lot of story i didn't need and the interesting part was short and uh, uh like sweet mm. but like it was good while it lasted but i was stuck with it too so i'm giving it a one but also a bit bloated yeah what do you think steve i am going to i i think i i i, I mostly agree with you but i think i like the bookends slightly better than you did and not that they were a great uh but I thought, like, the beginning was at least, at least, like, somewhat interesting setup to me, uh, to the character of Frank. But the end, I would kind of agree, was a lot of, like, I don't even know. Like, I don't, yeah, I don't know why. I, I, I feel like it was there so that you kind of got to know Frank after all this was over. But, like, who gives a shit? And also, you don't need almost an hour of that. Uh, I don't think, but 
Um, I am going to give this a two overall, I think, uh, maybe a softer two, but it, I, I wasn't lost at all in the story. It, there were points where I was, where I was like, this is unnecessary or that I got a little bit bored with it, but I think that I understood what the story was trying to say. Yeah, there were players that I didn't really know anything about them except for what was in the movie, but I didn't really need to, I, I don't think. But they're extraneous to the narrative. Sure. But, you know, there's a lot of other <laughs> movies that have that had extraneous things in the narrative that we've given twos to as well, I think. Uh, yeah, it's just even and I, I feel like we've said that before. That's, that's interesting because I was going to ask you that would you have – Given this a two, if it were, if it weren't Martin Scorsese who made it, but I then I'm asking, would I, am I giving it a one because it was Martin Scorsese who I'm made right. it? That's, like, good. I mean, that's a good question. Go ahead. Uh, Sorry. Well, uh. I, I mean, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I, the fact that is that I know it's Martin Scorsese, and I think that the story was fine. I'm not going to give it a one uh, because I hoped it was better. You know. Uh, <laughs> I mean, one because it was bad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't think it was the best narrative ever, but I don't think it was bad narrative by any means. Um, so I don't know. That's kind of where I'm just coming down. That very thing is what I was debating. Since it's Scorsese and he has such a you know history and pedigree behind him, then it becomes like you know, like should I judge it differently because it's just a director that I'm familiar with and I know his previous work and sort of know what you're getting into with so like this. So I think I might come down on a very, very soft two, like the softest two ever, because. Like you said, Sivo, it's not that I couldn't follow it, but also I will say one of my complaints, or maybe just me, but some of the times when he would like, you guys mentioned a character would appear and like a little blurb would be like, and also got like murdered in, in an alley in like in 1981 or whatever, like that happened like four or five times. No, it happened a, far I mean, more than that. a number like of times, eight or nine times, yeah. a bunch, right? And you're right, like what? Why do we need to know that? But I want, I, what I wanted to <clears throat> was doing some of the flashbacks and stuff. Now, yes, granted, you could gather what like what year it was, like based on what else was happening, like when Kennedy got assassinated, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But like there were these those time jumps, so it was like a flashback and then back. To, like not that they couldn't follow it, but I felt the transitions weren't handled as well, like in terms of that. So that was the biggest like distracting thing to me in terms of narrative. But nevertheless, all said and done, yeah, I I, I got the story out of it. Like it, the movie portrayed what it wanted to in terms of that, and I think it was fine enough, but. Again, I, I am ducking a full point for sure, and gonna gonna go with a, a soft two, good enough for a two. But I see the one e, and I totally like. I also don't begrudge you that. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So, well, Scott, you can you talking with themes? Sure. So love, loyalty, family, and the mafia. Like, kind of like, it's certainly, uh, or at least, the one of the core parts of it is once Frank uh, De Niro's Frank and um, Pacino's Hoffa become they sort of become buddies. Like they they hang out with their family. Mm. Like. You know, so they they built up this friendship, and then of course when things start to go south with the uh, the mafiosos, he's the one who's you know given the order to mm-hmm. rob out Hoffa. So it's this sort of struggle with that, and of course as you said, he now while I, I agree that it's it's not it wasn't as uh, let's say how should I say this <clears throat> his relationship with his family wasn't as built up in the way it could have been in order for the emotional payoff that it wanted you to have at the end, but that certainly I think was part of it. Even him and his wife, and you know, and his kids. Franks, that is, and and Hoffa, his wife too. So, like, I think those are the main themes. It's like every, not every, but a lot of the stuff that's going to come along with a story like this, a la Scors- a Scorsese, you know, gangster flick, pretty much. So I don't think it was mishandled. It was certainly there. I think it was fine enough. I think the characters were believable enough with them struggling with that. right? And also Frank's actually friendship with Pesci's um, Russell, I believe is his name. Mm-hmm. Right? So that's sort of his in, like, that's how he gets into the world of the mafia mm-hmm. and all that. So, like, yeah, the dynamic between those characters, or at least um, their loyalties and the, str- the, you know, the strain that's put upon them, I think that's one of the main focuses. And, like, again, basically a, a biopic slash historical, you know, somewhat historical fictionalized version of the story of Jimmy Hoffa and all the other players and characters, people involved. So I'm looking at a fine, solid one, but given that, I'll turn it over to you. Scorsese went full Latter-day Spielberg. <laughs> I see what you mean, though. Like it's a funny statement, but I think it's with fairly... a disdain for youth, because he numerous times, I 
both laments and judges people for not knowing the Hoffa story, which, granted, is an interesting story. I don't think the most relevant event <laughs> in history. Sure. Uh, uh, I will equate it to a Bridge of Spies a little bit. I can, I, um, and again, I can kind of see that. I can see it, yeah. Although, I, in, in a way, it's that Scorsese has kept his ways about where Spielberg has kind of, I felt, lost it a little bit. Mm. But I don't know. I I I might. I get what he's going for. It's like just what I was looking for the Ho- Jimmy Hoffa story, mm. like uh, the, the the most timely uh, <laughs> thing. But I mean, I guess it's it's what was important to Martin Scorsese. And he uh, got everyone out of the retirement home to come do his little play <laughs> for him. Um, uh, yeah, and I'm, I'm not going to say that he didn't tell the story of Jimmy Hoffa and Frank Schmidt. If anything, he told too much of the stories <laughs> of it. But, like, yeah, so um, even though I think yeah, you're, uh, you you quoted me when saying that it was mishandled of the emotional ending, I do think that I mean, he's always kind of done the, like, glamorizing the mom, but also stripping it Showing of its him. glamour. And I think that this is more so than anything he's done. That's a good point. Really yeah. showed their... Uh, how it's not a glamorous lifestyle, especially the ending. Uh, and actually, some of the jail scenes I really didn't mind. It was the, it, it, the first en- the, or the second ending was that then, but when it got to the third ending, whatever. Uh, but yeah, so I'm, I might give it a one begrudgingly. I uh, I'm glad that you brought that up. Like how they, how this film strips kind of the glamour from the mob lifestyle. There's like a distinct lack of like that. That montage scene that is in every single like, one of these uh, mob like, movies, like casino like, style thing, yeah, where it's like, oh, here's all the posh shit that we got, like seeing them like really enjoying the lifestyle and stuff like that. That is mm. not in this movie at all. Mm. Which I was like thinking about that later, and I was like, oh, that is actually what I. That's part of the themes of this that I really like. Um, Good fellows did it too, though. Yeah, for sure. I think you're saying you've seen that in a lot of other yeah things, and this one just had like a lack of that, like. Uh, this o- opulent montage, or right? Like. This and but that's what, yeah, that's exactly what I mean. Like this was completely stripped of that. Like there is no real enjoyment that any of these characters gets from being in the mob. They just do what they do. Mm-hmm. They're all and they're and that's part of the theme of the movie is they're all kind of just following orders from that they get from up top. And if you don't follow orders, like Jimmy Hoffa, you get rubbed out. And if you get a house painter, do you get? You know what Frank Sheeran got, which was every all of his friends dead, and uh, he writes a story about. It at the end of his life but like uh i think that that is kind of interesting an interesting way to uh, handle the themes of this like i don't think any of these guys had any fun this entire movie and uh and not just because they were ancient yeah <laughs> all right well we'll come back but to that uh later. but yeah so i'm gonna i'm gonna give themes a one I, I that was one thing that i really wanted to, mm-hmm. to talk about yeah, i got you yeah like i said i think it was fine overall so maybe not as begrudgingly as you but i'll still give it a fine one mm-hmm. sure yeah so I'm talking about the antagonist now. And this is a weird one. I don't think that there's necessarily a personification of an antagonist. I would agree. Yep. I would say it's the lifestyle of, uh, or a very, uh, what said, it's a uh, very stripped down look at the, uh, I, well, actually, one of my favorite ones is the one guy who got shot because of a miss. Uh, like, it was the, a bad hit because they thought he, they thought he would turn yeah, on him. Yeah. Uh, he wasn't just okay. one guy forgot to mention it to the yep. uh, uh, thing and then show the kind of anarchy, uh, not the an- an- sort of but the control of that. Yeah, or the inherent violence yeah. and uh, just uh, I'm losing my words. Uh, I'm not failing to be eloquent tonight, <laughs> uh, but it's. But it is that kind of a uh, mob lifestyle with mm-hmm. uh, yeah, that exactly. is violent and destructive and predatory, and yeah, I think it, they did a fairly good job of that. Yeah, and everyone just trying to navigate it, you know, and keep going and not get you know either backstab or have to backstab someone else, or if they have to, they have to because otherwise they'll be on the other end of the gun pretty much. So yeah, I mean, I don't have much more to add. I think that is the antagonist. I agree that there's not one single character that is necessarily um, head and shoulders above any other as the antagonistic force or personification. I think it's just the situation and the time and the place and what they're doing. And they're, they're again, navigating that, having to figure it all out and, and tread, wa- not tread, wa- tread the line between, you know, mm. different, different personalities within the, uh, within the game, if you will. Although I did find it weird how 
he's kind of conspiratorial uh how much power the mob had that they're behind the bay of pigs they're behind <laughs> they implied oh. that they're behind the kennedy assassination they like they had uh, a big hand in those events so it seems so, so from the story that we they're, oh, they're almost well, the it was also that they, here. that they got kennedy hired right yeah. like it was like or, or elected, you know, elected yeah. Yeah. where they fixed the vote and like you know that there have been Stories about that from all over the place, you know, conspiracy stories and stuff like that, for sure. A well, long time. But, okay. but to strip them of their glamour, but still have them be this omnipresent force, the, the puppeteers. Yeah. Is, yeah. Uh, it was interesting. I'll say this. For a brief moment, for about maybe 20 minutes in the film, it almost was like uh, Robert Kennedy was their antagonist because he became yeah. an AG and was like yeah. going after them. But that shortly like, fell away. So I still think I, I pretty much agree with what you said at yeah. the outset. And I'll probably give that a one. It's almost Forrest Gump. <laughs> kind of, yeah. That's funny. The Forrest Gump of Monsters. Uh, I what came into this contemplating a zero for this question, but I think that you make a good point, Ian, that, that there is like a, an overall antagonistic force that kind of... Surrounds them all. Yeah, shrouds all of the mm-hmm. characters in this. And uh, I will give it a one for that. I'm sorry that I... Convert you to a one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Stephen, talk about Frank Shereen and whoever the protagonist you think is. All right, so it's probably just him, I would say. Yeah, yeah. I'd back that up. Anyway. Uh, you know, Pesci and Pacino both have big parts in this, but they're not. They're like the most particularly protag side yeah. characters mm-hmm. to his life. Yeah. Sure. Um, yeah, but I think that for here's the thing i think that he's an interesting character for the parts of the story that that you liked Ian. and like i think that i think that the the opening i don't know hour or whatever this movie the setup to his character is somewhat interesting but he doesn't really start becoming um a more full character to me until kind of Hoffa is introduced. Yes, and then he, I very and then, much agree with that. And then you have the pull back and forth between Hoffa yeah. and the mob and, and, you know, and Russ and like, they're kind of both trying to figure out how to, or, you know, they're both trying to figure out how to play things. And they both know that they have somebody in Frank who is kind of loyal to both of them. So they can use him a little bit to like push back and forth. And I think that's a really interesting development with this character. And then I don't care about him by the end of the movie because... He's almost an elevated extra. It's the least interesting kind of person in this uh, entire conspiracy yeah. and network is the person we're following. But yeah, he just happens to be like central to the you know, events of what happened in history. Yeah. I mean, we yeah. could have followed Hoffa the entire yeah, time. Sure. I mean, you're right. It could have easily like kind of gone yeah. the other way. But I mean, yeah, given all that, I, I certainly would back it up that Frank Sheeran De Niro is in fact the main character... And we follow his week. We literally, like you said, perhaps follow too much of his story in various time frames <laughs> and so forth. But it's certainly him. And like, yeah, I, it's funny you mentioned that, Steve, because I kind of thought the same thing. Like after maybe he gets introduced to the um, guy who owns a restaurant via Russ or, yeah. or maybe um, Ray Romano's character, the, the lawyer yeah. who's the cousin of Russ. Right. The, when he starts his brother, right? Yeah, brother. Uh, yeah, 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 whatever it was. But when he starts to get like you know drawn in and uh, introduced to the the mob's world scene if you will mm-hmm. and from then on until he has to is given the order to take out Hoffa, i think that like chunk of it is very like the best part as you mentioned e and yeah so that means i'll probably give him a one overall even if some parts uh at the end spe- especially there was, I, I remember this I'll have, i'm going to bring this up here after he murders Hoffa, he gets in the car with uh, pesci and the drive away and i remember i just happened to look over at you you're watching it and you're like like calling for that to, that to be the end credits. Yeah. <laughs> so like I think till then he's a good character, interesting, and then the old man rambling part. Like sure, it's the it's Dakota, it's the bookend, but overall, all this to say, yeah, I think he's gonna earn a, a fine a, again, solid, decent one for me. I'm not gonna give him a one. Okay. Not because the character was uninteresting in a way. It's actually because of the performance. Mm. Uh, watching. De Niro, who's an ancient fuck right now. Uh, I, I love your work when you were younger, but you're <laughs> I'm sure he's what, listening eighty to or something years old. You're playing a thirty year old guy. You're trying. You're supposed to beat up this guy. You can barely <laughs> kick him. Uh, it, it, Slow motion. Yeah. It, 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 
you could de-age the face, but the old man body. <laughs> yeah, and that thing is incredibly distracting for me. And like, it, it, it was fun, but I actually thought that uh, Pesci and uh, Pacino put in better performances mm, than okay. uh, Robert De Niro. And as I said, the character himself, perhaps, perhaps if they did like a Godfather type thing where they had a younger actor playing him in his uh, youth to mm. give him a bit, bit more life. The thing is, it almost felt like they a weekend at Bernie's type thing where they're Jesus. propping up Robert De Niro <laughs> get, and like go me. on stage, say these lines, and he doesn't have any like particular. Maybe that's the actual character. He was just a stoic, but he was uninteresting to me. I get you. I'm still sticking with the one, but I, I see your point. That is, I I I think I might also give this a zero. Um, mm-hmm. just you both make good points. I'm not like steadfastly in either one of your camps but you're right there is something to be said for like you get kind of pulled out of the character when he can barely like fucking <laughs> you know when when you can't pull a little movie magic to make him beat the shit out of somebody like convincingly <laughs> it, it's like well isn't that like you you kind of have this character here who's supposed to be full of like fucking pissed bitter and like angry just an angry person you know, um, in a, in the scene where he should be the most angry and he can, like, can't lift his foot more than two feet above the fucking ground. Barely slowly stomping someone's fingers. It does pull you out of it a little bit. Sure. But I will agree, Scott, that, you know, he... I, I think that there are parts of his performance that are interesting. Uh, and I think that, you know, all this stuff in the in the middle part of the movie his character is is fine to me um mm. there are a lot of people that are saying like you don't really notice the de-aging stuff after a little while i did notice it for basically the whole damn movie <laughs> and it might be just because i was sitting next to you and we were feeding each other on like talking about it but i also noticed something. the aging of him yeah. which wasn't necessary because he's an ancient fuck <laughs> <laughs> but uh but at least he was like moving appropriately in that one. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, sitting in the wheelchair. Uh, uh, but sure. there was there was this whole thing of like, and and this doesn't necessarily go into like the character. I don't, I, I guess, but like that he moved like uh, he's old in the movie, and like seeing that on a young guy is really like strange. My brain sure. put it's those together very badly. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's uncanny. I thought that the performance was mostly good except for it was missing some of that like a little bit of that vitality that you were mentioning earlier mm. and and like that he doesn't he just doesn't have like the kind of that the presence perhaps that that you might no i think he has the presence okay. because it's nero he's always got the presence but he doesn't he doesn't have, he's he's not like pissed off like he wasn't ta- taxi driver you know or like he, he he can't pull that off anymore because he's not fucking 30 years old anymore or whatever um so I'm going to give it a zero as well, I think. Uh, it, it was close, and I don't know. Like, this is another question I could ask her. If, like, if this wasn't a Scorsese movie, would I give this guy a one? Or would I be even more down on him? Hmm. I don't know. But I was thinking, I, mean, I brought this up already, but, like, in you know, Godfather 2, when they have the younger version of Vito Cor- uh, Corleone. Sure. Yeah. And, like, you could have had... A similar thing. You here. could have done with Anna Paquin. Have different actors play the different roles. And you could have had uh, Robert De Niro in there playing the older version of him. And so had, you got Robert Pattinson to play Young uh, <laughs> Yeah. I, 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 sure. They could have had. <laughs> anyway. It's Martin Scorsese. He could have brought in. They brought in everybody into this. <laughs> um, sure. They could have had one more actor in here. Yeah, it would have been Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, yeah, fuck. It would yeah, have been Leonardo DiCaprio call. for sure. And I, this might have been a much better movie if it had. Uh, and the, being Young Frank. Yeah. Younger Frank. Sure, I mean, so I, I my point of thought is I get both points. Looks like you're leaning on like a softer zero, like just over the line for a zero. Yeah, and that's I'm probably, where I'm at. I'm probably yeah. doing, leaning mm-hmm. just over the line for a one. Fair like, enough. so it's yeah. close. Yeah. Right. Well, Scott, keep talking with supporting characters. Uh, so this one I think is much easier to give a one to, especially for the fact like I agree, at least to a large extent, that you guys mentioned uh, Pesci and um, Pacino's both had really good performances. They were like the most important. They were sort of like, not the angel, like, they were the two most important characters to Frank's life and to the narrative as a whole, because the narrative is about Frank's life. And I think they did, they sure. turned in some pretty damn good performances. 
and as we mentioned, like jokingly, yeah, there's also 30 other fucking characters like that are here. Like Harvey Cattell is also in this as a mob boss for a few moments. Uh, Bobby Cannavale, who also is in like every mob thing ever. Yeah. Uh, it's like a Stephen, Stephen Graham, Graham. Right. So I think they all like made sense. Like, I, I guess I'll say uh, certainly Pesci and Pacino, like those are the big main ones. And I'm giving them a one, like almost regardless, because I, I do think they were, they inhabited the roles like pretty well. Mm-hmm. And actually, I think is one of Pesci's most subdued mobster roles, if you will. Like he wasn't Joe Pesci, but because, as you said, he's eighty years old, so he's not going to summon that fire anymore. But he still was terrifying. He yeah. still had the threat. He was, to yeah. him. he was so like quietly, more yeah. quietly menacing, right? He exuded yeah. menace rather than just being like, oh, "I'm going to fucking kill you," right? Yeah. He so, came like, out of retirement for this movie too, which yeah. is fucking. Yeah, I mean, he, it was a good because Scorsese convinced him to. It was maybe. a good role sure. for him. But no, I, I think all like and you know, and their families and their wives and the kids, like they were all fine. They were there. There was nothing bad about them. They just all added together like, again to the world, to the um the story of F- Frank's rise and fall, and um and his relationship, his his friendship with Hoffa, and then being forced to have to uh you know eliminate him. So I think just overall the um and there's another guy Jesse Plumman. He was um he was in Breaking Bad. He's been to a bunch of other stuff. Yeah, he was like it was Jimmy's like adopted son or foster son or something. Mm. He was he was he was fine too. And then, like it's always good to see him. That's my son. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm just saying, like, for me, overall, the supporting cast, while huge, like, more than most movies, I still think worked, uh, for the most part, worked pretty well, in fact, and I'll give them all, collectively, a damn solid one. I'm shocked that Harvey Keitel survived this the way he was looking. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, he did no, look no, like there were, Keeper, yes. There were, um, even though he brought out everyone he ever worked with, I guess... Except on, uh, over the age of forty. <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, when when Ray Romano is the youngest person in the cast, it <laughs> says something. Um, but for actually, again, actually, for uh, I think Pesci alone here because uh, I like Pacino, yeah. but he's as much as he might have been playing Hoffa. I don't know Hoffa well. He seemed like he was playing yeah. Pacino. Yeah, of course. Uh, where Pesci actually did something new, something he hadn't. I haven't seen him do much before, and sure. he did it well. Sure. So I'm going to give him a one strictly on that. Yeah, Pesci did. Uh, he is a standout, I, and uh, Pacino too for me. Uh, but Pesci like really did this like quiet, scary mob boss thing, which is like you know he's always done the. Loudmouth, as we were mentioning, and seeing him do do this type of work is like really, pretty cool. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's there's also 300 other characters who we haven't mentioned, mm-hmm. but uh, I'm not super interested in trying to go into a ton of those. Like, yeah, you know, we we, we Pe- talked about there was Anna Paquin as a daughter. There was I forget what her name is, but Peggy, uh, her uh, his other daughter uh, yeah. uh, when she's an adult is in um, uh, some other mob thing <laughs> I can't think of, of right is. now. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, you get you get all these characters and all all these actors and everybody. Scorsese was like, "Hey, uh, everybody in the in Hollywood, do you want to be in a movie?" And they all showed up apparently. Um, so I mean, forty and over. Yeah, That's the, exactly. Over forty. You must 40, be just old or more to be in this movie. Yeah, <laughs> like a ride. You must have shrunk this much <laughs> to get in this movie. Uh-huh. Uh huh. But no, I mean it was good. The the whole supporting cast was pretty solid, and yeah. um, no, there were no like down notes I didn't think in it, and there were some really really good mm. parts. Yeah. So I'm gonna give it a one. Exactly, I think they all filled it out and uh, all collectively, uh, and especially for the standouts as we mentioned, and I think it's a one. Yeah. Now I'm gonna go into dialogue, and here I'm actually going to give Pacino a lot of credit because I think Hoffa. And I've actually watched a couple interviews with Hoffa since coming out. And if, I have to say, if anything, this movie actually made me want to get like a book on Hoffa and learn mm. more about him. You could just get, uh, but pick up I Heard You Paint Houses. That's the no, book that this Oh, no, no. I, I want to watch something with a bit more uh, gravitas. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> uh, this, uh, but I think like he had a very realized and energetic and like, again, even though I think Pesci had the better performance. Pacino That's delivers lines thing, yeah. uh, very, very well, and he didn't uh, disappoint there. Even though I think, when I think like Scorsese, I think of sort of like memorable dialogue, and this perhaps because of the length isn't as memorable to me. But I'm not going to judge it based on his past work. Unlike some of the other questions here, I'm going to say that like I thought that the performances handled their business well, and especially Pacino. That's fine. I'm leaning towards a zero on this one, and I will sort of like maybe circle it back to what you said or turn it on its head. Even with trying to discount, like disregarding uh, other Scorsese works, mm-hmm. 
it's I it's forgettable to me. Like now, yes, they Pacino in particular certainly embraced his role in lines, but what he was saying, like it, it all seems sort of like not a word salad, just like sort of bog standard stuff. And I, I remember thinking to myself, like three quarters of the way through, or even less, during it, I'm like, man, I'm not really engaged with this dialogue. Like it's fine, it's not bad. But it's really not doing much for me. It's sort of like just there. There's no, there's no like standout thing for me. There's no like fire exchanges. Here's one I remember that I didn't like when they're driving to go to like the final um, pickup of Hoffa to like take, bring him back to the house to kill him. They're talking about fish in the car and like, uh, yeah, like yeah. to me like that's like I feel like Scorsese wanted it to be like a classic scene, but it was just so like out of place and didn't add anything. It, I was like, this is stupid. It's I don't like it. It doesn't make any sense. Why, why even have this in the film? You're absolutely right. And there are other like little bit moments like that. That I think that's the most egregious one scene. But I, I'm just saying, like to me, there were other things scattered throughout that I was like, eh, it could have been better dialogue there. They could have had to say, say something better, different, like more interesting, or at least more engaging. So to me, I was coming into this one looking at a zero, and those are my evidence reasons why. So no, it's so totally fair points. I um. I'll say that I, I get what you mean by that, but I'll say this. I do like, uh, I think Scorsese's script. I mean, I, I know he didn't write this, but like the scripts that he puts on went, screen, yeah. he's like kind of a master at like the old mob. I'm saying something, but I'm not really saying yeah, something. Sure. Move, which that is a lot of what I remember. And like, you know, I, I, there, there are a couple like standout scenes for me where the dialogue was good, including like uh, a couple of scenes with, um, Stephen Graham as pro, uh, so it's a Tony Provenzano. Yeah, uh, where they get they kind of get into it. Like he gets into it with him is like you know ten minutes. Yeah, you're ten minutes late. Ten yeah, minutes yeah, you're late. Sure. He's like oh, no, it's fifteen. Were, yeah, tw- uh, fifteen uh, for fifteen minutes. They're going on uh, I, ten I, or fifteen minutes. I, I like that. I like that scene and like um the scene where where uh Pacino comes out where where uh. Frank Sheeran's like gets fed up at being called a motherfucker in the room and he goes to leave and Pacino comes out. He's like, oh, I was talking to them, not you. And he's like, well, you got to tell me if you're not talking to me. Like, yeah. that's like, that's kind of like the standard dialogue that I, that I'm used to. And I, I did like that, um, type of stuff. Now, granted, there were times, as you mentioned, that they went a little bit too far uh, at certain other times, I think, uh, for me anyway, than the ones I mentioned. But, um, I I like all the like backroom dealing and that type of stuff dialogue that Pesci has with Frank as well. Mm, it's fine. Uh, when they when they have their meets and like you know the other the other the other Tony is showing up there, uh, that type of stuff. So I mean I'm gonna give dialogue a, a a one, probably a softer one, but not not super soft. I I mean certainly you're free to give it whatever you want, but I'll say this as my final thought: sticking with the zero, mm-hmm. even some of the stuff you mentioned, I felt like a was like trying too hard or like I, I've seen it done better in other movies and even again trying to disregard that fact at the time I felt like it could have been just punched up a bit more would it, you it say a it's, bit it's like a sad old man yeah. trying to recapture kind of, the glory yes, he once had I would in fact mm, yeah okay. I, I agree uh, Steven on to you with uh, style um I actually other than the, the length of it <laughs> I guess if that counts as part of style. Uh I like the style of this movie. I thought the cinematography was good. Uh the soundtrack was a bit forgettable. I don't It was fine but not amazing. Yeah, I don't think I really you know, we watched this movie what, yesterday, two days ago. Mm. And uh yeah, I I could I could have done with a better soundtrack. Um but I thought the cinematography was fantastic, you know, as you would come to expect. There were se- several like Cool, no, like hallway that. scene, like tracking shots, and and you know, I think that Scorsese knows how to freaking shoot a, you know, shoot a scene. Um, the de aging thing is the hardest hurdle to get over. the The problem, like, there there are so many people that have been like I've been reading a couple reviews or whatever of this after we watched it, and. People are like, yeah, you get over that really quickly, and I'm like, no, you kind of like I don't know Your why you do, there. but I did, I did not. Um, so I kind of like noticed that the entire time. Uh, Took you out of it. I don't think I don't think they're, at least for me, they're not to the point yet where it's like, oh, that's 
that's you know seamless or whatever. I'm not sure it'll ever be, especially if you do like if you have to de-age an actor, you have to de-age the whole actor, not just his fucking face, you know, like to <laughs> me, which is like the hardest, mm. the hardest thing. That to costs do. money, Steve. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but anyway, that's kind of where I'm falling in on it. I'm probably gonna give it a one, but not like. I mean, I, I, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. I can't get over that. It bothered me the entire movie. It bothered me when they aged them up. It bothered me when mm. they de-aged them. You had him playing thirties, forties, fifties. His own age, 90s or whatever it was, <laughs> it, it was incredibly distracting, especially since perhaps you can do that if he didn't have, like, of all these characters weren't old men to begin with mm. and had the mannerisms of old men playing. And I, th- that's one of the problems. You got the, you, I think you said this before, where they, they gave clues to the, uh, what, uh, era it was through events happening on. The problem is, I couldn't tell how old these people were because I was like that's the thing it's like I didn't know like is this because it's a 900 year old man attempting to play like a whatever age he was supposed to be I have no <laughs> idea it just was really strange to me and I, I've, I've heard people say that about like the Star Wars films which I haven't I haven't seen any yeah, of the yeah, new ones I mean, where they had like the CGI characters okay, in yeah. there and like like it's just distracting, and this was very, very distracting to me. They do use it much less in Star Trek than obviously, or Star, Star Wars, Wars yeah. Star Wars obviously than than they do in this. But uh, yeah, sure. So I mean, yes, it's, it's it's funny to me. Like you guys uh, seem to notice that, and it, it was bothersome, or at least distracting enough to you. Now, to me, the DH thing, it, I didn't really have that much a problem with it. Yeah, it was there. It didn't really take away much. Uh, at least again, your mileage may vary, as pointed out. But personally. I was mostly okay with it. I was like, fine, whatever. Now, yes, it was noticeable, but it wasn't too much the to the um to the degree where I was like, say, it's completely removing me from the film. I will say, yeah, I do agree though that Scorsese still at least can shoot a good movie for sure. There were some great shots, some of the um wide tracking ones, some of the almost like single shots like around the room, like stuff stuff you've seen, but still very well composed, very well done. And the soundtrack I thought was going to be like more self indulgent if you were like more um nostalgia mm. trying to grab it I, I felt it wasn't that mm. so i'll give it credit on that so all in all and because of my personal like where do you place pacing in this uh pa- probably in plot oh, that's right so i took off point for that and actually I have something to add when we get to narcomination that i meant mm. to say in plot but we'll tie into both so yeah like pacing was fine enough like i said what whatever uh i thought was um a fault in it i took off the point there in plot but um for style i'll probably end up i will give it a one I think it worked for me more often than it didn't. Anything that was distracting was less so for me personally than for you guys. So all, all, all in all, it's solid enough, and I'll give it a one. So what are you giving, Siva? I'm going to give it a one first time. Right. Are you giving it a zero? E? I am giving it a zero. No. I hated. It. it was just too much. Yeah. Uh, it took me out of the complete of the film. Fair all enough. right, Scott. Recommendation. All right. So I don't even know what I'm giving it, but I have to um, keep my integrity and. Back up what we were talking about. We went to the, out to the bar, I believe, after we saw this film when it came out. Mm. And we were talking to some friends of ours. And they were about to watch it. Or, like, I just started it but didn't finish it. And I said, eh, don't worry about it. It's not You're not really missing much. So that means I'm probably going to give it a zero. And I might, uh, uh, here's what I wanted to say, or meant to say um, in plot. That I felt as if it would have worked better if it were, like, a mini series mm. That would have taken care of the pacing issues. That would have t- taken care of, like, the weird time jumps. Or, like, when the fact that it was jumping back and forth here and there. I think it had more space to breathe a bit or at least be cut up that would have served the narrative and everything else about the film better so yeah like sure if you're gonna if you're into it you're gonna watch it anyways but i wouldn't i would say don't worry about it now maybe it's gonna be an oscar film like pick which is basically what we're doing it for anyway more or less but personally i would say to people i would not recommend it more than i would and i'd I'd say something like you might as well watch a different scorsese or a different mob film this one's okay at best, but really, there's much better things out there. It doesn't, I don't think it, at this point, deserves the hype, I guess, around it. Now, it's not a bad film. I'm, like I said, like I, I, we already talked out, but I just personally am not going to recommend it. I think you can skip it, and that'd be, you'd, you'd be okay with that. I'm kind of coming down in the same camp there. Like, it's, I mean, if you're going to definitely watch it anyway, cool. It's, it's a decent movie. Uh, it's a pretty good movie. There are certainly much better Scorsese movies out there. There are better mob movies mm. out there. Uh, you can watch something else and th- that is shorter than three and three hours and 45 minutes. 
or however long this is actually. What is it? Three and a half. Thirty five. I think. I think it's, it's three twenty eight. Mm. I think is what whatever. It was. But um, the the length of it really. If this was two and a half hours, I would recommend it. But the length of it really, really makes me not want to tell people to go see it. And like the same thing, like. We felt it, like so. I have to say that if somebody comes up to me and is like, "Should I watch this?" I'll probably be like, "If you have an entire afternoon, you're not doing literally anything else, I guess." But like, Mm. it's a long, long movie. It is can feel slow at certain points. It can drag. Can drag. Yeah, exactly. It's it's a it's a Scorsese movie plus an extra hour, (laughs) pretty much. I I mean that's that's unfair. I know a lot of his movies are pretty freaking long, but yeah, uh, I mean Departed's long, and I would by far recommend Departed way more than I would ever recommend this. Yeah. Instead. Um. Yeah. So I'm gonna say no on recommendation. Go watch another Scorsese movie. I think a lot most of his movies are better than this one. I know a lot of people are touting this one really highly, but um, I think uh, this I, falls yeah. on the lower third of his. Films. I just don't see it. Uh. So I'm gonna give it a zero. I rarely, even bad movies, I say that, like, all right, I sat through it, I was over it. I actually feel offended that I wasted my time <laughs> on this. And if I'm going to say something, if one of you gave this a one, I was going to reference the fact that we were ecstatic when this was over. <laughs> no, no, we no, were like angry said, yeah. uh, towards the end of it. Like I said, there's um, no way I could have, in all good faith, yeah. recommended it, given our and reaction there, to there it. There is a good movie in here. It's just, as of right now... He's too big of a name, and people give him too much leeway mm. to. Uh, uh, it shouldn't have been allowed to be this length. Someone should go back and edit this into a more mm. into a yeah. more palatable film. Um, Jesus. So, uh, Scott, mm-hmm. Steve-O, you gave it a seven. Uh-huh. I gave it a five, which I think is even generous. Um, which is so a six point three overall. Sure, I think that's it's it's a bit better than average given its pedigree, but it's nearly not all that compelling. Yeah. All right, well, I'm Jonathan Ian Manzer, and I'm going to go hire a hitman to kill Martin Scorsese here with uh, Stephen Ramosi. I'm going to order a buffalino sandwich. <laughs> They're delicious. <laughs> and Scott Thurlow. And I'm going to go dig up Jimmy Hoffa. See you next time. Good night. Editing and engineering by Christopher Morgan. Music by Christopher Morgan. Check us out on YouTube and iTunes for the shows. And on Facebook and Twitter, and Or mods?